here I got a big donation of just fabric that was already cut to the size of these tote bags. So we spent a little money and bought the, the, the belting stuff to make them. And we're going to give these to the foster kids this year because they don't have anything to carry their stuff in. So they're not all this pretty, but they're lined and, and they just make a nice little bag for their clothing or whatever they carry with them from place to place. And they're, and they're nice. And, and this, and of course, is for a guy or for a boy or a girl that likes to hunt. Because <laughs> all you girls like to hunt except me. But the uh, only thing I hunt is my plate where the food lands, you know. But... <laughs> Um, has anybody here, is anybody in here that has received a quilt or has uh, given one? You want to talk about it? Well, when I had my knee surgery recently, Pastor Mark brought me over a quilt. Sorry. Um, I don't remember it because I was just coming off of my pain medication and uh, he covered me with it and it was awesome but uh, yeah so we we have them here so if you are a loved one or is having surgery or is in bed rest or just needs comfort uh, that's what they're for so don't hesitate to ask for one and we'll be happy to give you one and the scriptures are wonderful I know we gave one to Pam um, John and Diane's daughter who went through cancer surgery last year which her one year checkup is coming up so we need to keep Pam in prayer um, we gave her a quilt and we're working and praying for her for her to accept the Lord and it comforted her and she accepted it with great love and she's read the scriptures and it is it's touched her life and that's what it's all about you know is, is reaching people and so she had it still out oh. on her couch praise the lord with all the, the writing and everything i know it's really cool yeah so it's great things like that for our loved ones that you know, maybe they wouldn't ever read the Bible or, but it's, it's just wonderful. So, I mean, and that's a perfect example. Cool. Well, you'll notice in your uh, bulletin, there's this little sign-up sheet. And um, you guys, guys, men, you don't have to be afraid. If you don't want to come and sew with the ladies, you can support us with your wallet. We like money from wallets, so if you felt moved to, to put some money in the basket for us, that gives us a lot of um, stuff that we can make more quilts with. And also, ladies or whoever, please sign up and come. Uh, you don't need to know how to sew, like Ivy said. You can do some ripping or some writing or some ironing or whatever, but bring your lunch because we really like to have a party at lunch. <laughs> so. So that's really all we have to say. But, you know, that's what we do. Thank you. So it sounds like maybe there's some good anger management in there with the ripping and tearing, you know. And, and guys, guys, just in case you didn't hear that, she will take the shirt off your back or the dollar out of your wallet. She's, she's not picky. She'll... She'll take it all. Take it and I, I wish John Briggs were here. He was going to try to be here today. Uh, we gave him uh, one of the quilts when he was uh, recovering, when he fell and broke his hip. Um, but he, he took his. And this is so some of you can plan on being sick. All right? So if you end up in the hospital and we bring you one, he made each of his nurses find their favorite scripture. So they, you know, some of them were going, huh? You know, they've never read it in their lives. And uh, so anyway, they read several scriptures. And then each time they came in, he said, do you remember your, your favorite one? And he, and he was trying to get them to memorize it. So talk about some ministry tools. It's, it's awesome. And uh, Ken Oles was really kind of bummed. He was upset. He was hoping that he got a second one. Uh, he was saying, you know, this is his second surgery. And he thought that, you know, that he ought to have one. And I said, well, we'd get a competition going, you know, just to see how many sickos we have. Uh, well, I won't go there. Um, anyway, ushers, if you would come. We're going to receive our offering this morning and allow you to give, again, the, the first offering, your tithes and offering. The second one will go towards uh, the quilting ministry. So if you want to do that uh, from time to time, we have some folks that, that support that. If you want to be a monthly supporter to it, you can. Just sign it up on that paper and put it in that second offering so we, we know 
keeping track of that. Our, our missions team for next month is putting together a big Oh My Goodness. So, so be ready for a big Oh My Goodness uh, next month. Did I say week? I mean next month. And my daughter's looking at me like, huh? So this way you announce stuff so that this isn't the first time they hear it uh, on the day before. So anyway, second offering will go towards the quilting ministry. As I said, uh, ladies, if there are some of you want to sign up, um, and some of you guys, you can sign up too. Um, they won't let me. They won't. Will you? Huh? Well, the most famous quilters are men. Oh, really? So, if God's busy by his son, although you'll have to listen to our chit chat. <laughs> well, you know, you were doing pretty good till that point. <laughs> you know, 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 Okay, can, can we have the guys maybe do, do our part back in the yeah, double? We, all right, we can do that. We can do our man talk. We can keep talking about gut and elk. That'll be uh, exciting. That's, that's far better than talking about having babies. Yeah. We won't go. <laughs> okay. Well, not all of us are. Well, and God, thank you that you love us so much. Thank you that you give us opportunity to serve you in, in all kinds of ways. And, and even with just the talents and desires that you've given us. Lord, I pray that you could raise us up as passionate people to serve you. As we give now of our tithes, are, uh, again, because you've blessed us so much. And Lord, as we're able to give towards missions, and especially this, uh, this ministry from right here in this church, where we're already reaching so many folks. God, we ask you to bless each gift, each giver. We ask you just to, to bless us that we might be a blessing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I give you my life. I give you my trust. Jesus. You are my God. You are enough. Take up my cross, Jesus. You are my God, whatever the cost, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. My heart is yours, my heart is yours. Take it all, take it all, my life in your hands. My heart is yours, my heart is yours. Take it all, take it all, my life in your hands. Take it all, take it all, my life in your hands. And all, and all to Jesus. I surrender all to you, I freely give. And I will ever love and trust you in your presence. I will live. And I surrender all. I surrender. I surrender her all. My heart is yours. My heart is yours. Take it all, take it all. My life in your hands. My heart is yours. My heart is yours. Take it all, take it all. My life in your hands. Take it all, take it all, my life in your hands. Ooh, 
Good job. Yeah. Ushers, if you'd come, I have a handout for you. Okay, it's uh, 10 after 12. I've got a 45-minute sermon ready to preach. <laughs> got quiet real quick. <laughs> yeah. Okay, pass those out. What I'm going to do, just so you know, actually I don't. I, I was smarter than that. And I know that some of you think that's stretching. You are being handed out something that uh, some of you were handed out a, a while back. And this is called my testimony primer. Uh, what I would like to do is next week we are going to have a love feast communion service. Okay? Uh, part of that, a, ma a major part, a large part, will be giving opportunities for people to share testimonies. One of the things that I really believe, and uh, you're going to hear me talk a lot about this uh, in this coming year, and I, it's something that God is really placing on my heart. Uh, how many of you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord? Okay. How many of you think that it's like the greatest thing in the whole world that you've ever done? All right. Help her out there. Come on, Lisa. Lisa's, Lisa's trying to decide. She doesn't know if getting saved or being married is greater. She's having a, a rough time. I know that. Um, <clears throat> Jason's praying for my lying tongue. Okay, um, but one of the things that's happened, were your lives changed? Has your life taken a different direction? Has your life, have things been different since you've come to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord? Well, one of the things I'm, we're going to be talking about over this next year is, you know, our bottom line in this church is, okay, growth is going to lead to something. Growth in Jesus Christ. It's going to lead to life change. Because when you ask Christ in your heart as Savior and Lord, it's a life-changing experience. Do you remember my sermon from the uh, beginning of January? Uh, you know, it's a life-changing experience. And so the thing that we're going to focus on in this next year is not just trying to make good people better. It's not just trying to make Christians that are growing, growing bigger, okay? Uh, but it's about experiencing life change that comes through Jesus Christ. And one of the goals of that is going to be reaching out into our, our community. I told in my Sunday school class this morning, I would like to see my Sunday school class double. Double not just from Christians moving in. There's nothing wrong with when Christians move into the community and they find out we've got a great church here and they just want to be part of it. That's a good thing. Those of you that have done that same thing, we're glad you're here. But one of the things that should be happening is we need to be impacting our community. We need to be taking our... Uh, our testimonies, our lives need to be out in the community where people see it and where other people's lives can be changed. And so that's the kind of growth I'm, I'm hoping for. I would love to see. For some of you that don't know, you've never taken the 101, 101 class, one of my goals as a pastor is that this church to be 400 people. Okay? Now, I want you to understand this. Um, I know that the sign out in front over here is 458. Is that what it is or something like that? Um, but in this community, there are over 4,000 people. There are a lot of folks here that need Christ. And I know that we're not the only church, but I, I would love, you know, if we had 10 churches that had 400 people, we'd barely even be able to reach this community. And, and, and we need to see that happen. So, so we would like to see, and that's one of our goals. That's why we're, you know, some people are talking about, why are you building? If you have not seen Bob and youth, you better come up with a name or it's going to be stuck. Does so everybody know that Bob is the building out back? You know that? Okay. I kind of, it's a good name. What do you think, Bob? You think that's a good name? Yeah, that's a kind of a good name, you know? You know, Robert, oh, Bob, Robert Hayes, he even thought it was a good name. So anyway, but, uh, but the reason that we're doing that is we've got to provide. We're building, building to serve. We want to serve the church, but serve the community. We want to reach out to people for Christ. And so that's what we're going to do. So next week, I'm giving you this. So that this will give you a little bit of time to kind of figure some stuff out because you're going to have some opportunity not only to share if you'd like to, but also to share at the tables and stuff. A little bit of testimony about who you are. And some of you, um, you know, I, I have no clue about your, your past. Some of you that are new, I haven't even been able to, to get a chance to, to talk to you yet. I hope to do that. Uh, but this is really simple. This is something that you can learn to do. Um, this is how you can testify and let people know. Uh, it's really simple. My name is. How many of you know your name? Okay, husbands, ask your wives if you're having, and give them a nice name, would you please, wives? Okay, <clears throat> and, and you can introduce it by, you know, this is just a little statement. There are a lot of great things that have happened in my life. Is that true? A lot of great things. You can name some of those. Uh, 
Here is some help. Uh, you know, when I was married, that's a great day. Another one, you can talk about a lot of things, but the other is that you want to just introduce in the conversation. Well, one of the great things that happened in my life was when I became a Christian. When I asked Jesus Christ into my life as Savior and Lord. It, it was life-changing. And then you just ask, can I tell you about it? And guess what? There are two answers that they're probably going to give you. One is, oh yeah, tell me more. And the other is, exactly. Eh, you know, no. Guess what? Jesus told us to go. Jesus told us to tell people. He didn't say that we're responsible for their action or reaction. Our job is to just go and tell people. So there are going to be people. In fact, some of you probably rejected testimonies from a lot of people before you ever came to Christ. You know, remember that, Roger. Remember, you know, I didn't want to single anybody out, <clears throat> but so just briefly. And this is why I said you've got about three minutes. After that, you're going to sound like Pastor Mark. They're not going to want to listen to you. And everybody said, "Yeah." <laughs> Bless you too. <clears throat> okay. Just say when it happened, where it happened, and what the circumstances were. Just tell them that. And, you know, and, and just say, th thanks for letting me tell you about this picture from a part of my life. You know, you, this may not be the harvest time. This might just be throwing out seeds. might be watering. might be planting. Who, who knows what it is? And then maybe we can talk about it some other time. So anyway, <clears throat> just help this to, to get some succinct thinking in your, in, your, in your brain. Now, I want to share a scripture before we leave, and it's in John chapter 9. I'm going to read verses 13 to 25. Most of you have probably heard this. John chapter 9, and uh, I don't know what page it is in those black Bibles. And uh, <clears throat> there's my daughter's grabbing one so she can find it. But John chapter 9, and just, just please use this as kind of a, a, a jumper, kind of a, a jump start for your thinking. Uh, because a lot of people think that your testimony has to be this wonderful, fabulous, awesome, incredible kind of a thing. Which, in all honesty, if you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, it happened, didn't it? It is awesome. It is wonderful. And, uh, but in John chapter 9, verses 13 to 25, just want to read this. Uh, they brought to the Pharisees the man who was born blind. You remember the story about him being healed. He says, Now the day on which Jesus had made uh, the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Okay, bottom line, church people got hung up on how this guy got healed, okay? We know that. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. His sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Just let that sink in your head. Some of the Pharisees said, well, this man is not from God. He does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, how can a sinner do such miraculous signs? So they were divided. Okay, that's something that's never supposed to happen in church, by the way. Divisions. That's what a, the love feast is about. It's celebrating the love that we have in Jesus Christ, okay? So, uh, finally, verse 17. Finally, they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he's a prophet. The Jews still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, they asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? I love this. We know he is our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see now, or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He's of age. He'll speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For already the Jews has decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Christ would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, he is of age, ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been born blind. Give glory to God, they said, we know this man is a sinner. And he replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind. And now I can see. What God wants you to share with people is what's happened to you. You may not be a theologian. You may not have all the answers. In fact, if you do, I'd like to meet with you because I have a lot of questions I could ask you. And that's not just a joke. But God has commissioned us to go. All you got to do, folks, all that he's looking for, and it can, it can shut the mouths of the skeptics. It can shut the mouths of the Pharisees and the... And the Hypocrites, you just tell them what Jesus has done for you. 
This little primer that I gave you, a little primer that I gave you. I'm not asking you to write a book. God isn't commissioning us to all write books. The greatest story ever told, we can find that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But what he's done for you can be the second greatest book ever written because it happened to you. Tell people what Jesus has done for you. I just come back to that. I'm not trying to throw out guilt. <laughs> Although, oh, I found those notes now, Dwayne. <laughs> if you'd shared, if, if someone hadn't shared what happened in their lives to you, would you have had that wonderful event happen in your life? that you now take for granted every day, that salvation that we have in Christ. Just tell people, I don't know all this other stuff, but this is all I can tell you. Once I was blind, now I can see. Once I was, but now I'm, because that's what Jesus has done. Stand with me, would you? We're going to close in a word of prayer. Work on this. Uh, if you haven't signed up to bring, you can bring chili, you can bring, although, you know, last week we had a lot, but uh, I like chili, or any kind of a soup that you have. I know that Lisa's been asked to bring her famous macaroni and cheese. Did you get that out of the boxes? <laughs> uh, but the kids really like the macaroni and cheese. We'll have all the kids sitting up with us in family groups and all that stuff. It will be, it'll be wonderful. It really will. It's a great time but also be prepared to just love on one another and share about the love that God has given to you. Father, we're not perfect people. We're so far from it, it's actually embarrassing. But you are perfect. You are a great God. Your great name is above all other names. You've, you've saved us. You've healed us. You've, well, you're working on us. Some of us are a long ways from where we're going to be. But praise your name, Lord, we're a long ways from where we were. So, Father, I just pray that you'd give us opportunity this week to think about what you've done in our lives and condense this thing down into a, a short story that everybody wants to hear. And, Lord, even if they don't want to hear it, at least, Lord, may we share it with them and let them deal with it from there. God, I just pray that somehow we can make a difference in this community. You've made a difference in our lives already. And so we just want to go out and be faithful to that calling and go. And share the miracle, the blessing, the awesome great thing that happened with other folks around us. Go with us this week, God. May it be a, a great time of not just growth, but also a great time of life change. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. I don't want to find any of these sitting in pews. That's your last warning. Give about 30 people a hug or a handshake. Tell them you're glad to see them in church. God bless you as you go.